Well, hello there, Scorpio. Aditi here with Bloodstone Productions, where we help you discover your true north. We're going to do a general reading for the month of December 2020. Bear in mind that this is a general read, so not everything is going to resonate with everyone. Take what resonates, leave what does not. Also, spirit is not bound to our time and space continuum, so timing may differ because it is divine. Yes. Okay, let's see. Um, welcome to my channel. Um, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if this reading does not resonate, also check your other placements. There may be something for you there as well. Okay. Father God, Holy Spirit and angels, what messages do you have for the sign of Scorpio? Any placement, Scorpio, for the month of December? All right, let's take a look-see. Let's take a look-see. We have the Eight of Swords, clarified by the Nine of Swords and the Sun. Then we have the Lovers, clarified by the Ten of Wands and the Chariot. And then we have the High Priest, clarified by the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. Well now, whatever self-imposed prison you have put yourself into, you are coming on out of that. Yeah. Um, whatever truth you were looking for, you found it. It is very much illuminated. And now you have now you've made the decision to move forward. Not only move forward, but also move within and get what you need to be able to secure not only your resources, but also your emotional center. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so um, so you've set up this parameter, right? And with the Eight of Swords, it's, yes, it is a self-imposed prison, but it's usually set up as a defense mechanism. And as you can see, she is perfectly comfortable standing here behind these swords. I mean, even her familiar is just, just chilling and looking, looking and chilling. But then we move on and we see with the nine of swords, like it's, there's, it's this, this prison that was once comfortable is not comfortable anymore. There's been some growth here. And so now that you realize that, now that you realize that, it's been made clear that, hey, wait a minute, hold on. The same way that I've been trying to, trying to shield myself from pain, I've also shielded myself from joy. The same way that I have set up all of these barriers to protect this part of me that's been injured. Yeah, it's protected, but it's also insulating. And so it keeps me from getting the things that bring me joy. And the sun has now brought that to your attention. So you are choosing to lay this burden down and move on to something else. Let me run that there again. So you have chosen with the lovers to lay this burden down, 10 of wands, and move forward. It's a really good sign. So we've got the high priest and in the traditional right of way, it's the hierophant. 
the Hierophant is the religious leader, the super preacher. He's he's the one that is very pragmatic about how things are to be done, right? And he doesn't stray from that. So with the high priest, he's he has all of or vast amounts, mind you, of the esoteric knowledge, but he hangs on to them with such a grip that he's, when all else fails, he is going to do what he believes is the right thing, right? And with where the cards are showing me, this, this is a really good place to be because you are taking care of yourself you are taking care of your resources and you are taking care of your emotional center with this Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. So let's go ahead and clarify the Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, and the Sun. Get a little more information on these three. Got the Two of Pentacles, Seven of Wands. And the Nine of Wands. Yeah, this is really this is really weighing on you, and you're really juggling whether to stay where you are because you know it, or whether to and defend it, right? Or to really look at it and and really be honest about what it is that you're looking at because it's a heavy burden to bear like you've got two nines here right you've got your nine of swords and you've got your nine of wands that's nine of air and nine of fire like it's it's fever pitch illuminated by the sun okay all right, let's uh, look a little further with the lovers. The Ten of Wands and the... What, I'm not taking all of those. The lovers, the Ten of Wands and the Chariot. Lovers, Ten of Wands and the Chariot. Let's take a look, see. Got the Knight of Cups. The Two of Wands and the Star. Oh, the Star came out anyway. All right. So when we're talking about the Knight of Cups, this is, I say this a lot, but this is very youthful, passionate energy. The Knight of Cups is... Uh, you ever watched Happy Feet? And the other penguins go with Mumble back to where they were and they, Antonio's penguin sees Mumble's penguin and he looks at her and he's like, I love you. I love you! That's, <laughs> that's this guy, that's this guy. Like, he, he may mean it in the, in the moment, you know, but he's young. Your mileage may vary. And um, and we've got the Two of Wands, which is about making, moving in a direction. Like, choosing which direction to go in. You know, with the Two of Wands, it's about making the choice. With the Two of with the two of Swords, it's about making the choice. With the Two of Wands, it's about stepping in the direction that you've chosen, right? And then we have the star. And the star is a card of like illumination. It's the star of, it's the card of, of healing. You know, it's got, she's got a, like, like look at her, she's exalted. It's, you, you're, she's held up on a pedestal, you know, it's, it's restorative. It's the, <sighs> in a nutshell. So putting all of these together, it's like, okay, you, 
I passionately want to move to something that feels completely different than this. Okay? You, you want to get out of that head space, you want to get out of that body space, and move to something that causes your body to kind of relax, right? So let's look at the High Priest, the Ace of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups. We've got the Empress, the Emperor, and the King of Cups. You are not playing around. Spirit is giving you, Spirit is like right here. Like, what up, dog? <laughs> so, the Empress, she intuitively has universal knowledge right while the high priest is very well versed in he's he's well versed and he's very studied in he's very studied in esoteric things and the empress while yes she is very studied but she also has the natural gift right so there's a very deep, deeply rooted divine assistance here with you. And then you have the emperor. The empress and the emperor, oh, I take that back, the empress is all of the queens combined. Got her confused with the high priestess. Whoops. No, the empress is all queens combined, right? She's a bad mother, shut your mouth. Like, look at her. She's she is chilling so hard, so hard. And if you see, you see her, her familiar, he's just like, yeah, and what? What? Say so. what? Like, she's beautiful. She's refined. She's regal. She knows how to rule. More importantly, she knows how to rule herself. She knows how to run her emotions. She knows how to run her passion. She knows how to run her mind. And she knows how to run her money beautifully. This is balance at her best. And then you have her counterpart right here, the emperor. And he understands the law. He understands the reasons behind the law. He may not share them with you because it's none of your ding dang business, but he knows it. And he knows how to apply it because with the emperor, what the emperor wants is quiet. He wants quiet in his head. He wants quiet in his heart. He wants quiet in his soul. He wants quiet in his loins. He wants quiet. So when these two come together, right? And then you follow that up with the king of cups who the king of cups he has a lot of emotion he may not speak it but he feels it deeply so what i'm getting from this is that you you have a lot of you have a lot of emotion tied into this thing that you have tried to try to protect right and you know that the time of protection 
the time of insulated protection is coming to a close. It's like, it's about that time, like if you ever break a bone and you put the cast on and then after a while, the bone heals and it's time for you to take the cast off. And when that cast comes off, there's still like, you know, like a level of soreness because it's been insulated for so long. This is, that's what this, that's what this signifies. Like cast on, cast off. And they know it's time to take the cast off. You feel it feel it. All right, Scorpio. Thank you so much for, oh, wait, no, no, no. Not thank you for. Spirit, do we have any last words of advice for the sun sign of Scorpio for the month of December? Any last words of advice for the month of December for Scorpio? Make it plain, please. Make it plain, please, and thank you. Five of Pentacles. The Tower. And the Eight of Wands. Like I said. So with the Five of Pentacles, that is the left out in the cold. That is the card of feeling like you've been abandoned. It's, there's change here, right? And with that change and with that walking away, um, somebody is going to be, somebody's going to be upset about it. There's no getting past that. And then we've got the tower which is an unavoidable fated event, right? And if you look, you see some people are thrown out of the tower. Some people are thrown out and others jump. But the tower is going to happen regardless, right? And then we have the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands is the card of rapid communication, which means that you're, you're, getting, you're getting messages that it's, it's time to gather up your things and it's time to make a move. Because this is coming one way or another and someone will be affected by this choice that you make. Okay, well Scorpio, again, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Um, if you liked what you saw, please be sure to hit the like button and also hit the share and subscribe button as well as the notification so that you know when I upload videos and I will be uploading periodically. Thank you so much and remember to be good to yourselves and be good to each other and I will see you next time. See you later, Scorpio.